Uh, just always such a, a, a chaotic and vibrant time to be in Hong Kong. Does the vibe feel the same three years on? Well, we don't have the fans in the stands just yet. They're expecting about, oh, just short of 30,000 stands. The stadium holds 40,000 stands, but by ordinance, uh, they can only be 85% capacity. We're also told that tickets sold is about 28,000. One thing that is going to be missing, though, this year are a lot of those overseas fans that come here, that flock for this weekend of, yeah, imbibing a little alcohol, sure, but also greasing the wheels for business deals. Because this is, yes, a sporting event but it's also kind of a banker get together and a place where people have a good time now I just want to walk down here obviously it's empty right now and the stands will fill up for the first match uh, after 3 p.m. today but everywhere where you see these red uh, jackets over the seats indicates where you can't sit so as you can see uh, overall in the stadium not too many red seats that means it's going to be probably packed and heaving especially down there down there is the the infamous South stand where a few alcoholic beverages might be drunk, and that's the key. How are you going to police what is supposed to be in Hong Kong, a mask mandate outside? Well, kind of quietly, people are saying, well, if you eat and drink, you don't have to wear a mask. But <laughs> let's, I've been covering and being at the Rugby Sevens for more than 30 years. Y you you drink and eat all the time. So people are not going to be wearing masks. So this is a good litmus test for how much tolerance Hong Kong authorities are going to have for a lot of, dare I say, drunken individuals having a darn good time. Oh my goodness, Steve, you're reminding me of the good old days. I think it was a few years ago <laughs> while I was there and guys, I mean, yeah, you're right. There's no way that you could socially distance in that environment. But what will the experience be like for yeah. players as well? Because I remember, you know, they got to enjoy Hong Kong back then. Well, that's right. Unfortunately for the players, they've all been put into a bubble. So they're not going to necessarily have the type of interaction uh, with the city and with the fans in years past. That's what's so great about the Rugby Sevens. And I don't mean to be such a cheerleader about the Rugby Sevens, but it is a, an amazing weekend. Uh, for those who have never been to the Rugby Sevens, it's kind of Hong Kong's pressure valve where, the, you know, it's a, it's a business city full of pressure. And this weekend is usually at a time when you release some of that pressure and have a good time everyone has a good time okay when the French come out there's some booing okay this is a former British colony there's some legacy uh, <laughs> hatred if you will built up there but it's all in good nature and in good fun <laughs> and we'll have to see whether the old teams of Fiji New Zealand which they've they've met 14 times for the cup final Fiji has the advantage including five victories out of the last five years, seven out of the last eight. They're the powerhouse. We'll have to see if the other 13 teams, I believe, is it 14 or 16 teams this year, if the other 15 teams can give a good challenge. Yeah, and I remember Rugby Sevens is not just about rugby, right? It's everything that follows around rugby because nope. you're watching the games and then you go to the parties and, and the drinking and, and then you go to, you know, uh, the, the, yeah, the party scene in Hong Kong. Have fun. Steven Engel there joining us from yep. Hong Kong. <laughs>